Welcome back. Our next presenter up uh, comes to us from the University of Puerto Rico at Mayagüez, Stephanie Ortiz Rosario. Her title of her presentation is Environmental Moisture Influence on African Mesoscale Convective Systems. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Stephanie Ortiz Rosario. I'm, I'm an undergraduate student from the University of Puerto Rico at Mayagüez. And today I'm excited to be sharing more about how moisture can influence mesoscale convective systems, specifically over the African region. And this work is actually in collaboration with my mentors, Kenny Nunez Ocasio, Zachary Moon, and Chris Davis from the Mesoscale and Microscale Meteorology Lab. So first, um, I would like to get, get you all more familiar with the mesoscale convective systems, or MCSs. Joe explained a little bit about it in his presentation. But technically these, we can describe the them as the largest convective storms. And think of these as a group, group of, cl of clouds that have a very large area. And this area has to be at least 100 kilometers horizontally. And within this area, there also has to be precipitation. But this precipitation, something curious about it, is that it's not equal across the entire area. And if you see this figure to your, to your right, this is a radar image on how a typical MCS looks like. And if you see in the front of the system more red regions, this indicates more intense rainfall from the convective region. And then more in the brown, orangey areas, this is more associated with lighter rain from the stratosphere region. And systems like these actually cause a large por portion of rainfall, not only here in the mid latitudes, we can see these over Colorado, but also in the tropics. And this actually leads me to the African mesoscale convective systems, in which in West Africa, the rainfall is mainly associated with these systems. And in the figures to your right, is, there is basically a schematic on, how, on the weather phenomena that can influence the weather and climate over the African region. And they can also influence the mesoscale convective systems that form. And for the sake of this, of the focus of this project, I'm gonna be emphasizing two. The, and they're listed. The first one is the African Easterly Jet. And you can think of, the, of this as a belt of high-speed winds over the region. And I also want to emphasize the West African Monsoon, or WAM. And this is actually seen in the, in the figure above, where it says the ocean cold tongue. These are actually southwesterly winds that they transport water vapor into the African region. And this is situated over the summer in the African region. And why should we care about African mesoscale convective systems? One of the reasons, which actually is so close to home, because I'm from Puerto Rico, we get a lot of tropical cyclones, it is that these systems are a key role in the tropical cyclogenesis of the African easterly waves. But also, because in, compared to the weather in the mid-latitudes, the knowledge about convection in the tropics is more limited, especially because the data we don't have data is scarce, so we don't have access to a lot of instrumentation or, across the area, and it can even give us insights about climate change effects related to the water vapor. And MCS have been studied in different ways, but I'm going to emphasize one that actually helps us answer our research question, which is how mesoscale convective systems are modulated how they change when we alter the moisture. And the method we used is through modeling, especially, specifically through the model for prediction across scales or MPATH from NCARM. And in here, the most important feature about these simulations is that they can let us alter the moisture at different levels of the atmosphere, specifically moisture. The variable here is the relative humidity. So, in a general sense, we have three different experiments. So we have one in control, no alterations in moisture. Then we have a moist um, experiment where the moisture was increased across the atmosphere of um, 20%. And then we have the dry region where the um, relative humidity was the, or moisture was decreased 50%. And the domain, which is um, over the African region and the Eastern Atlantic, this, um, specifically over the center, it has a very high resolution, so it let us capture the formation of clouds um, more, more in detail. And this data is situated over September of 2006. And 
it, it runs for a period of five days. Now that we have these three experiments, first we want to see how clouds form, or MCSs, but in a general sense, we want to observe the clouds. And I did this by tracking MCSs by eye or subjectively, so you can see the drawing um, where I was like following the clouds that formed in the control environment, in the moist environment, and then in the dry environment. And one fun fact about this is that in, um, if you noticed in the dry environment, you don't see a cloud formation until later in, during the simulation. And it's actually um, through MPAS. But because we want to obtain more specific details about like, how many MCS has formed, like how long did they last through the three simulations, we used a automated tracking algorithm, or this is more of an objective tracker, and this tracker is called the Tracking Algorithm for Mesoscope Convective Systems, which was actually developed by two of my mentors. And this algorithm is based in three main steps. So first, we want to identify these clouds that formed. We want to see if they can be potential candidates to become MCSs. And we do this through the cloud top temperature, right, the brightness temperature, so basically how bright the clouds are. And after we identify these potential MCSs, we want to follow their path. So that is why we use tracking and specifically the area overlapping technique. And lastly, we have the classification, which once we have these clouds, we have to say, oh, are they organized? Are they disorganized? Did they last less? Did they last more? And this is why they are in the disorganized and organized main categories. And then we have from the ones that are more disorganized and last less, like the disorganized short-lived, and then the ones that are bigger and tend to last more, like the mesoscope convective complex. But um, now we want to see how the African environment looked um, during these three simulations. And first, I want to start off with one of the environmental um, atmospheric phenomena that I talked in my second slide, which is the African easterly jet. And we have this, these plots actually represent the winds at 600 hectopascal, which is roughly um, close a little bit more than four kilometers in altitude. And the contours actually mean um, the wind speed. And you can see that between the control and moist, um, this belt of high speed winds actually shifts a little bit to the north and they in the moist environment compared to the control. And they also can, you can see some darker shades of the contour, which means higher wind speed. However, now if we compare it to the dry environment, we can see that this belt kind of ripped apart, and especially over the south compared to the control environment. Now we want to examine our second atmospheric um, phenomena over the, can, that can affect cloud formation over the African region. And this was the West African monsoon. And in here we can, uh, this is lower, closer to the surface in terms of altitude. And the green contours basically show um, the amount of water vapor in, available in the atmosphere. And the vectors actually mean the wind speed. And the southwesterly is the signal of the African of the West African monsoon. And when we compare the moist with the controlled environment, we can see that, especially over the 10 and 15 north, there is a darker shade of green. So it means more water vapor um, in this environment, and that also an indicator that the West African monsoon intensified. Now, if we look into the dry region, we can see that there is a lot lighter shades of green, which means that there was less water vapor in the dry compared to the control environment. So we can say the West African monsoon um, weak, weakened in this environment. And to get a general sense before we dive in into the statistics of the MCS, like how many they formed across all simulations, I wanted to show you all the mean precipitation rate across the entire simulation. So basically these plots show how much rain felt, um, fell during like high hour and if we take a look, it, when we compare like moist into control, we can see um, more darker colors, specifically over the 10 and 15 north in the moist compared to the control. And this can actually be related with the West African 
monsoon moisture. And then in the dry, we can see that we, don't, we barely see any precipitation over here. So for the summary into this part, it, we, we know that between the West African monsoon um, and the African easterly jet, they both are enhanced in some way in the moist environment compared to the control. But uh, we saw a greater, um, very, a greater difference in the West African monsoon of the control environment compared, the moist environment compared to the control one. So we can say about this that the mean precipitation rate can be more associated with the West African monsoon, specifically because it can, um, with the moisture availability, it can affect um, those clouds can um, intake that and form. Now, into seeing like how many MCSs formed, like did the moist form MC more MCSs or the, the or the control. We will find out, and in here I show you all a box, um, a bar plot, which shows the four categories that um, TAMS uses to identify the MCSs. So, from the disorganized, the organized systems, and across all the categories, we see that there are more number of African MCSs in the moist in the I'm sorry in the control environment. But uh, we want to, wanted to look at other variables, such as like how long the, these MCSs last. Um, and if we take a look into the, um, this is a box plot, which shows, I'm going to focus in the, um, the median, which shows like the average duration of these MCSs, and also the whiskers or the lines over the moist and the control environment, which show like um, the extremes of these values. And uh, it, it is very notable that for the organized MCSs, um, the dry actually, um, these MCSs that formed lasted less. And well, um, and in control and moist, they lasted roughly the same, um, comparing it to the, to the median. But now if we see the extreme values or the extreme of the whiskers, we see that the moist can have more extreme um, durations compared to the control. And lastly, to show you, um, I want to emphasize here um, in this scatter plot the MCS area. And this is for the organized Mesos African MCSs. And if we take a look into the control compared to the um, moist, we can see that the slope of the moist actually is, is higher. So it shows that for the same amount of duration of these MCSs, the, the moist ones tend to be, have greater areas. And then um, as in the dry, we, these tend to have less area, um, a smaller area than in the control. So now, for the summary, um, the main takeaways is that, first of all, the, the environmental moisture does not equal that more MC, African MCSs. But because we saw this, that we had more number of, of MCSs in the control compared to the moist. But we did see that more extreme long-lasting, uh, more extreme long-lasting MCSs in the moist environment, and because of the moist dif of, of the moist difference in here, we can see between the moist and the control with the West African monsoon, we can see that these longer-lasting and higher areas can be associated with the monsoonal moisture. But we still have one question to answer, and we will need to uh, evaluate more variables for this. And it is basically like why more MCS is formed in the control environment instead of the moist, for example. And this is part of the future work, so we want to. This is another step that TAMS can do. It can, we can uh, we can study specific MCSs. We can, like for example, assign precipitation. We can track them, and we can see where they situated in terms of the variables um, that are affecting them, such as the African easterly jet or the West African monsoon. And that is everything for my presentation. I would like to thank Nessie for the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much. Hello, so we got some questions. I also wanted to remind everyone online that you could submit questions through Slido. I'm coming. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Um, you. Could you explain wh why you choose those percentages for the different runs, like 20% plus in moist and 50% oh. minus for the dry? 
Yeah, um, that is a great question. Um, so these simulations are actually um, post-processed. So they um, basically, um, the reason why we chose the 20% is because like, if we increased moisture more, it, it, the atmosphere was gonna be oversaturated. And this actually would provide the simulation with a, basically a, a less realistic feature on the convection over the region. So we could um, increase the moisture up to 50% because the, uh, we, we want a realistic picture of how, I'm trying to look here into the, the percentages so that you can all see them. So yeah, basically we want to obtain a more realistic um, picture of the atmosphere. So we, if we increased moisture too much, the atmosphere was gonna be um, more saturated. Makes sense, thank you. So I have the question about the topography in Africa. Does that affect the systems? Yes, that is a great question. And they actually do. Um, I'm gonna search the picture, uh, the figure that shows the African region. So in Africa, we have um, many mountains and plateaus and highlands. So they can also, they can, they do can affect the, how the convection forms. And I wanna show you actually the mean precipitation rates where actually it was very interesting because in the moist environment, we saw increase in places where we had um, the mountains. So yes, you can see the increase in the precipitation over the ocean, but also if you see those like um, small dots of high precipitation over the land. So this is actually close to the Guinea Highlands and the Joss Plateau and the Cameroon Mountains. So this could actually be an indicator of the topography affecting the systems. Thank you. Thanks for a really great presentation. Um, I wanted to ask you, if I don't know if you can, but if you could expand on the 20, 50% moisture increase, decrease. Is this, um, I know you said that you wanted, you have, you were sort of had the boundary condition of still wanting a realistic um, mm -hmm. simulation, but does this relate to anything else in the climate system, any variability that might be close to that? Or do you expect uh, maybe 20% increase in moisture due to climate change? Or is there any other like physical reason that you could relate these percentages to? That is, um, thank you for the question. So what uh, we can actually, yes, we can relate this in terms of the climate change, um, because as we know, um, there is gonna be a water vapor increase. So um, I'm not sure of how much, but um, this could be a way to observe this. So I would like, I mean, it would be interesting to look more into that. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for this presentation. Do you mind me asking, why did you specifically choose that period of time in September? Is that most commonly when these MCSs are occurring or is, are they kind of common throughout the year? Do you mind expanding on that a bit? Um, so um, one of the, so, for, during the summer, so we tend um, the Af one of the factors that can affect cloud formation, like the African easterly jet, it becomes stronger during this period of time, and also the West African monsoon um, gets stronger during this time. So we have these clouds forming, and as, um, this is very interesting because in 2006 we had the formation of Hurricane Lean. So it was actually very interesting to look. Um, how the clouds around the system look like. Wonderful work, Stephanie, thank you so much.